Hello, my name is Paul Miners. Welcome back to another one of our Asana training videos. In this video, I'm going to be doing something a little bit different to my normal screencast tutorial videos. Instead, what I'm going to be doing is taking you on a behind the scenes look at how we use Asana, Calendly and Zapier within our company to create a really efficient booking system. We use Asana to manage all of the client engagements and clients we're working with at the moment. We use Calendly to allow our clients to book their support and consulting calls with our team. And we use Zapier to glue everything together. So when a client books their call, Zapier will add that booking or that appointment into the correct task in Asana. If that client then cancels or reschedules the call, again, Zapier pushes those changes through into our Asana account. So I'm gonna be running you through how the system all works and how it's tied together. I won't be able to go through our entire Zap and how that's set up because it is quite complex and there's a lot of moving parts there. But I hope that by sharing a behind the scenes look into how we do things, this will help you work out how can you use Asana more effectively and use tools like Zapier to connect Asana with other tools and systems that you use. If you have any questions at the end of this video, or if you'd like to see more behind the scenes videos like this, then please leave me a comment below. And if you want one-on-one -on -one help with setting up or rolling out Asana to your team, or even creating automated systems like this, then click the link in the description below to learn more about our Asana consulting options. So let me start by showing you how we set up our client projects in Asana. Now, this is actually just a demo project just to maintain the privacy of our clients. Uh, I'm not showing you our actual client's project, but I've set up this client's demo project and this is set up exactly how we have our actual client's project set up. So the project we organize by client type, which is actually uh, specified via a custom field that we have on our tasks. So here is a task, this is John Smith. So when I say client project, we don't actually have an entire Asana project for each client that we're working with. We have a task. So here's John Smith, the name of the client that we are working with. Now, if you are looking at the projects here and wondering why is this task, John Smith, in multiple projects, this is really just for the purpose of this demo. I've added this client to our client's demo project, this one here. But because I wanna show you some Zapier automation, which is tied to our client's project, I've multi-homed this task. But for our actual clients, we only have our client tasks living in the actual client's project. We then have some custom fields for tracking various aspects of the project. Again, when I say project, I mean task. We use Asana's native time tracking to see the estimated time and actual time recorded on the task. So as you'll see soon, when we book a call, or if the client books a call, that estimated time is going to update. So we can see how many calls does the client have booked with us at the moment. And this is really useful because by estimating the time on a task, we can I can see my team's upcoming workload and who has capacity to take on more work. We then record the actual time so we can see how many hours have we actually spent working with this client. This is important because some of our engagements, clients are buying blocks of hours from us. So you can see here we have budgeted time, eight hours. So this client's got eight hours of support they can use along with some other um, resources that we make available. And so we wanna check that how many of the budgeted, budgeted hours have they actually used? So those are the estimated and actual times. We use a custom field to show the status of the client for some of the projects that we're working on. Sometimes we are waiting on the client or we're waiting for confirmation once we complete the project. And so that allows us to easily see you know, who we have in our queue, who's in progress and what's the current status of the work. Budgeted time I've discussed already. We have also the value of the client. So from a revenue perspective, what has this client paid for? and the cost associated with servicing the client. Because I pay my team by the hour, this allows us to track how profitable is this engagement, you know, after all the hours we've spent, you know, how much money is the company actually making? And then finally, we have another custom field to show the client type, which is how we've grouped the project here. You can see we're grouping tasks by client type. And so if you watch here, if I was to, was to change this to, um, retainer, John would move to that retainer section. 
And then finally, we have this Calendly booking UUID, which is a custom field we use to track the ID of each booking the client makes. And this is used in our Zaps so that we can update the correct booking subtask when clients book their calls with us. So you'll, you'll see that being used soon. So that's the client task, the custom fields. We also have a brief description of the project down here. So usually this is something we write actually in Pipedrive, which is where we manage our opportunities. So when we first meet with a client, we're working in Pipedrive up to the point where we close and win the deal. And so we have notes in there about a description of the project and what the client is hoping to achieve. And this actually gets copied into the Asana task. So we've got a nice summary of the client's goals. And then down the bottom here, we have the subtasks where we track all the actual appointments that they've booked. So at the moment, there's nothing. So that's an overview of how we set up and manage our clients in Asana. Now let's look at Calendly and let's book a call and see how that updates this task. So when a client signs up to work with us, we send them a link where they can book a call either with the consultant on my team they initially met with. So if you met with Lindsay on, our, on your sales intro call, you can choose to book with Lindsay. She's in Rhode Island, USA. Or if you'd prefer to work with Holly because she's in Brisbane, Australia, it's better for your time zone. Or you can book with the next available person. So this is actually all built using Calendly's routing feature. So if I show you the back end here, this is under the routing options. You can set up logic like this, where if somebody says, I want to book with Lindsay, they will then get directed to Lindsay's booking page. If they want to work with Holly, they get directed to Holly's booking page. Or if they want to work with the next available person, they go to our round robin and they can view all the combined available times that both Holly and Lindsay are available. So we could just say here, the next available person. So now Calendly is showing us all of the combined available times that my team have available. We can then pick a time. So let's choose later this week. Uh, let's choose, uh, I'm in Auckland. So for Lindsay, this would be a bit of an early call for me, but let's get this booked. So we're gonna say, John Smith is booking the call, john at email.com. And we, our clients can provide details so they can say, I'd like to set up a template for my business. Yeah, I'm just gonna be generic there. So before I book this, let me take you to Zapier and let me give you an overview of how this Zap works. Now, there's a fair bit going on here. Um, this Zap is triggered initially when a Calendly booking is made. Now this could be a Calendly booking either for a consulting call or we actually have different event types for free consultations, demos and support calls that we do. And all of those types of bookings get routed into Pipedrive. So you see activities and things being created in Pipedrive there. But for our client engagements, we have these other paths. Now, what the Zap actually does is when the booking is made, we try and find an existing task in the client's project with the name of the person who booked the call. So because John Smith is booking the call, he's provided his name here. Zapier is gonna try and find a task called John Smith in our client's project. That's basically what this step is doing. Now, if it, if it successfully finds the parent task, we then create a subtask for the appointment. If it's assigned to, if the, if the task is not assigned to Paul, we add a comment. And if the parent task is not assigned to anyone, we assign the parent task to the new consultant because that person is now going to take charge or take ownership of that client engagement. If the parent task was not assigned or, or wasn't found, sorry, and this may happen because sometimes the booking is made and maybe John books with his name, John Smith, but perhaps in Asana, we have him as Jonathan Smith. So sometimes the Zap doesn't work as expected because people's names are different. Then we have a bit of a fallback that happens where we create the task or we try and find the task using the person's email domain. Um, if we can't find the task, we, we still create the appointment and we will manually link it if we need to. But essentially, all you need to know here is that when the Zap is triggered, we add the, a new subtask, hopefully, to the correct parent task in Asana. So let's give that a test now and let's see what happens. So I am going to click schedule event. 
So you see here, John has now been booked with Lindsay. She was obviously the next available person at that time. If we go back to Asana, if we give Zapier a second here, we should see a new subtask being created. There we go. So you see that just appeared there. The subtask is called John Smith call one hour. We can see it's assigned for this Saturday at 1 a.m., which is according to my local time zone. And it's been assigned to Lindsay because Lindsay is the person that John has booked with. We can also see if we go into that subtask now, we've got the details of the appointment. So we've got John's email, his time zone, a link to the Zoom, a Zoom link. So Lindsay's got quick access to this and even a bit of a summary here of what John would like to discuss on the call. We can see that because this is a one hour call, an estimated time of one hour has been assigned to this parent task. And we can also see back at the parent task level, Lindsay has been assigned as the owner or assignee on the parent task because this is the first call that John is booking. Lindsay now becomes the primary consultant supporting that client. Now, because the estimated time of one hour was added to this subtask, if I go to the workload view in Asana, I can see my team's upcoming workload. And so Lindsay has an hour booked for later this week. And we can see there is the one hour assigned to John. So I can actually visualize and see what is the upcoming capacity or availability of my team based on the calls we have booked at the moment. So now let's say for whatever reason, John decides he needs to reschedule his appointment. He can do that. He can click a link in the confirmation email and he'll be able to reschedule, or we can reschedule this in, on our side from the Calendly uh, backend. So I can click reschedule here just to show you. And I'm gonna keep John assigned to Lindsay in this case. So we're now gonna pick a new time for the call. So let's say it's now going to be next week. We're gonna pick this time here. And we're gonna put in here the reason for change. Uh, I need a bit more time to create my template. So we're gonna update that event. This then triggers a different zap and it's a different zap because we have a different trigger. So this trigger is if an invitee or an appointment is canceled or updated, we trigger this automation. And there's a few different paths to handle different logic here. But what we do is in, Cal in Zapier, we try and find the original booking subtask using the UUID of that subtask. So what's that about? If I take you back to Asana, here's the subtask that was created when John initially booked a call. And if I open the inherited fields here, what we do is we attach the UUID. This is basically the ID of that specific booking we attach that ID to this custom field. That allows us to then find the existing task and update it accordingly. So if the appointment is canceled, we clear the estimated time, we put in a comment, we mark the task as complete, or if it's rescheduled, we update the time and we post a comment. So if we go to Asana, you can actually see in the time that we've been talking, the um, due date and time of the task has been updated and Jarvis, which is our sort of Zapier bot, has added the reschedule reason here, I need a bit more time. So this notifies Lindsay and a few other collaborators down here that this has been rescheduled. You can even see in the change log that Jarvis changed the date from the 25th uh, to, or sorry, to the 25th, the new time. So that automatically happens. Lindsay doesn't have to update this herself. Zapier takes care of that for us. Of course, the other thing that can happen is the client may choose to cancel their call or we might have to cancel it for them. So if I come in here and click cancel, I'll just say this is a test, please ignore. I'm gonna cancel that now. That's gonna trigger the same zap as before. Uh, and this time it's gonna run this path here. So the appointment was canceled. If I go back to Asana, if I give it a second, we will probably see, or we should see this task getting updated. So there we go, you see the task was just marked as complete. It's shown as canceled here. And we come down here, we can see Jarvis has added the cancellation reason. This is a test, please ignore. So that is a look at how we use Asana, Calendly and Zapier to maintain a really efficient booking system. Without a system like this set up, we would be spending a lot of time manually creating and updating tasks in Asana as those Calendly bookings or updates come in. And that's not a good use of our time. 
by having Zapier set up, it really just reduces the admin. We just get notified when those changes happen and it just saves us all a ton of time. I hope this behind the scenes video was useful. If you want to see more behind the scenes videos on how we use Asana or Zapier or Pipedrive for that matter, then please leave me a comment below. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.